in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome everybody to St Nicholas Church in Chisley for our Sunday service. I'm delighted to be ministering in partnership with John over the next two weeks. He'll be leading our prayers and preaching. And I'm also extremely grateful to John for curating all the different parts of our services, preparing the files and the words for Kathy. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and loving mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. We have not always worshipped God, our Creator. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ, our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit, our guide. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing the Gloria. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, beginning at the 22nd verse. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land 
for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Thanks be to God. May these words of mine please him, for I rejoice in the Lord. There was a book written a number of years ago now called If You Want to Walk on Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. The basic idea, which comes from today's reading from Matthew's Gospel, is that if we want to get closer to Jesus, then as he walks on the waters of life, we have to get out of our comfort zones, out of our boats, and walk towards him in faith. And faith is also the subject of the section of St Paul's letter to the Romans, which is also set for today. Paul wrote that whereas the old righteousness of Moses was based on adherence to the law, the new righteousness is based on faith in the risen Christ. So, like Peter in our Gospel reading, we have to be willing to accept Jesus' call to come to him. But unlike Peter, we need to maintain our faith beyond the initial excited desire to complete the task that the Saviour has set us. The ground or the lake that Jesus challenges us to cross will not be smooth and may not be firm. And our faith in the Lord must carry us through all the challenges that we face. We have to believe. Yes, we may be willing and able to get out of our boat. But do we really have the faith to continue? Not just for an hour, not just for a day, but for the rest of our lives. But what does getting out of our boat really mean? My answer is that for each of us it will be different in detail. But for nearly all of us, I believe that it involves giving up a little, or perhaps a lot, of that which we cling on to in what we think of as our Christian lives. And I'm not talking about basic faith or belief in Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the ceremonial, the habits, the behaviours, which tie us to a particular thought of church. These are things which may get in the way of us being able to get out of our boat, to step out and embrace the new and the dynamic. And this may mean different types of church, different types of worship sometimes. And all of these can and do make us feel very uncomfortable. But in all of this we have to remember that any and all worship of Jesus Christ has value and is good in his sight. Whether it's something that we do in our old and beautiful church buildings, or in a school or village hall, or even here at home, the Lord is there where we are when we call him. The Lord doesn't mind if we say a simple service, attend a high mass, or sing to pounding rock rhythms. He will listen to all and everything. 
without judgment. And we need to remember that and to do the same. Our duty is to worship our Lord Jesus Christ and not to worship the service or the words. Our call from Jesus is to walk on the waters of life with him and have faith in him. Now, tomorrow and forever. In the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father, as we learn about the new ways of worship in our three churches, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come upon Richard and our leadership team. We ask, Lord, that in these strange times you walk close by us on the waters of life and strengthen our faith. We give thanks that through all of our virtual services and the benefits and diocese, we have been and will continue to be supported in our following and love for you. We pray for all those working in the hospitality and healthcare sectors locally and those keeping our essential services going. We pray for all those employed in our local industrial estates, that their jobs may remain secure for the future. And we pray especially for all those who may have lost their jobs and face uncertainty. Lord, we pray for our world, this fragile, broken earth that you have given us that we call home. Remind us as we pray, Lord, that we are but guardians of your creation. We pray for all those in positions of authority in this country and across the world. We pray especially at this time for our government that they may continue to make wise decisions about the pandemic. And we pray that they always act in accordance with your love. Father, we pray for our supportive communities in these three villages and this wider area, giving thanks for all the local initiatives of care. We pray for all countries of the world as we face the corona pandemic together. And we pray too for all those affected by earthquakes, hurricanes, other natural disasters, and from terror and war. We pray for all doctors and nurses working in the NHS, in care homes, and those caring for people at home. We pray, Father, for all those who are sick in body, mind and spirit. We think especially at this time of those who have contracted COVID-19 whether they be known to us or not, locally or further afield. We pray too for those whose treatments may have been delayed, asking that this may continue for them as soon as possible. And Lord, we pray that all may be blessed by your healing love. Lord Jesus, we pray for all those who are bereaved and feeling lost, asking that your love holds them in perfect peace and gentleness. In a moment of silence, let us bring to mind all those known to us who need our prayers at this time.
Finally, Lord Jesus, we pray that as we continue to strive to meet the challenges of this troubling time, our faith in you gives us the strength to walk on the waters when you call us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your Church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing our hymn together. Thanks be to God. God.